I was answering some DMs and I got a question or had asked about a topic from a girl named Tegan. And she had asked about how to navigate your fitness journey as life changes happen without burning out or overdoing it. And Alex and I thought that was very pertinent for us to be able to go over right now and to be able to talk through what we do when it comes to our fitness journey and how we advise clients to take those next steps forward. Yes, it is uh, something that everyone is going to deal with. And oftentimes people feel very alone in that moment in which they're having these changes in life and their priorities are having to be shifted around a little bit. And so I think that giving this resource and kind of going through some of the things that um, we found to be successful within our own time, as well as with our clients, I think will be a tremendous help. What do you feel like is the first step when you realize things are happening and your life is changing and you might have to make a change to how you're going about things? I think the first thing is going to be identifying what's the most important to you um, and understanding in which whatever is most important to you, how are you going to show up for those particular things? And um, putting yourself in an understanding that um, there's only so much bandwidth that you're going to have. And so the things that you are navigating through, the, the life changes and those different factors, those are going to probably take away from the bandwidth that you have available to you. And so by creating a priority list, that's going to be the first step to really identifying what is most important and then what can you invest or put into those things um, on a day-to-day -day basis and what can you realistically expect out of yourself when identifying those different priorities. Are those the type of questions you ask yourself when you're trying to identify priorities? And do you physically write them down or do you more so go through them in your head? I find it more helpful to write them down um, because oftentimes when I am just leaving things in my mind, it's very fleeting. So I'm thinking about it in one instance and then something takes my attention and then I find myself in a scenario in which um, I forgot what <laughs> I was even thinking about. And so it's very easy to just go off of emotion in that time and, and what is the most pertinent in that immediate moment relative to when I write it down, it allows for me to think and kind of zoom out more to create a more full picture understanding of exactly what is most important at that time. I think I go back and forth of I really enjoy lists, uh, whether they're digital or handwritten, but sometimes I need to just sit by myself and kind of breathe and ask myself questions and have a conversation of truly when it comes down to it, exactly what you said, I have a limited bandwidth. So what are the things that are the most important? And when I start going through that list, sometimes I realize that it fills the bandwidth and I'm like, wait some things are still important to me. And I think that was the hardest thing for me to cope with is recognizing that things can still be really important to you and they can still be a priority to you, but it doesn't always mean that it's a top priority to you, especially if you're going through a rough patch, if you're going through life and you're needing to make an adjustment, you need to take that into consideration, especially when we talk about having the stress bucket of there's just one bucket. And I love visuals because I can literally put myself in that visual and picture the different things in my life sloshing into that bucket and recognizing that bucket is literally overflowing and I need to do something to be able to manage this and to take the next step for me to have any success instead of keeping in my head I need to keep going at the same degree and have the same focus and the same exact values every single second of my life because that's what I found not to be the case <laughs> <laughs> so looking at your priorities it, it as we are navigating through something for ourselves at the moment what are the, let's say, the top three priorities for yourself at this time, just to give the listeners an example? Family is very, very important, right? The, well, all the time for me, but extremely instance, more yes. so right this second. And then it was really my own health was uh, in there as well, uh, because I know that I can definitely put myself in the backseat and I have to constantly remind myself that I cannot help other people if I do not help myself first. And if even if that causes me to have to remember every little 
again, visual or like example I've been given of that to reinforce it in my head. Because it's interesting as humans, we can do something and see a positive response for it. And that's not enough benefit for us to keep doing it. And same for the opposite way of we can do something that makes us feel bad, and that's not enough for us to not do that thing. And so I think that I really need to reinforce that. And so even if it's thinking about airplanes where they're like, please put on your mask before you even help your own child or your own infant. And there's a reason those safety protocols are in place. And the same thing goes for yourself as a human. And other people do need you or might need you a lot. But you also need yourself. And there's times where you can't make yourself the priority that you want to. And that's where it kind of comes into looking at these priorities, looking at the bandwidth, and then being able to decide for yourself what at the core is a non-negotiable for me. Because my health also includes like my health and fitness as a whole. And realistically, I couldn't do the exact same training sessions um, to the same frequency. Like I had to take extra rest days in place. I wasn't able to consume the same amount of food. I wasn't able to get the same amount of rest and a multitude of other variables going on where it's like I need to be able to still move my body and take care of myself. And maybe that doesn't look like perfectly nailing every single aspect, tracking every single macro, and all of my spreadsheets looking perfect. It's I need to make sure that I am getting sleep each night and I'm trying to be conscientious of getting in bed at a good time. I need to make sure that I'm getting in enough water because that is one thing very in my control and I can always have a water bottle with me kind of thing. And I need to be able to just move my body. And again, that hasn't looked like always training or training to the same degree every day. It's an adjustment that needs to be made because there's a level of recoverability that I don't have anymore. And so I need to make space for that and make those right decisions. So um, being able to look at those priorities of like family and myself slash my health. And then from there is this glute program in our business that we've been working on. And to some people that might be like, oh, that's your next priority. But Our business means so much to me and and to us, of course, but it's something that I don't take for a second for granted for the fact that I am responsible for other people and people that I want to be able to be responsible for and to be able to provide an environment that they enjoy working with and they can flourish in. And so being able to dedicate our time to something we've we've dedicated a decade to already, I just want to continue to pour into that and something we've been working on for that business. And it's going to also be great for everyone involved in the business is this glute program. And part of that includes me talking about the glute program, but also just us getting things on the back end ready for the glute program. And there has been a ton that has gone into it. And it has felt so overwhelming sometimes, but being able to go back to that priority list is super duper helpful because then I can just do order of importance of if I'm thinking, does this meeting need to be moved or does this deadline need to be moved or um, do I need to push something back? It's okay. What is the most important? This isn't a top priority. All right. It shifts. Doesn't mean it's not a priority. It's just not a top priority. And so it's that connection that you constantly have to make of it doesn't mean I'm also giving up on this thing. It might just be a temporary adjustment to be able to flourish or even just survive for this instance. I Yeah, 100%. I think that uh, the way that you've gone about it has been um, very, very good as well as um, you've taken everything with in stride and, and with grace and giving yourself a lot of grace throughout the process as well. Um, one thing I will add within the, the priorities because we are in alignment with our priorities and that's probably why we've handled this as well as we have. I, I think that we can, I'll, I'll give ourselves a good grade for mm-hmm. how we've done so far. Um, the one thing that I will add is the one-on-one work with our clients on a day-to-day basis. There's just a lot of emotion that is required. And so there's a lot of bandwidth that is required. Um, I, you know, I, I did, um, about 
11, I did 11 check-ins before I, we, we recorded this podcast today and I recorded for probably 130 minutes for those 11 check-ins. There's a lot of emotion that goes into being on camera for that long, as well as um, speaking to the intricate details of what's going on for each and every client. And so that's been probably the hardest thing for me to to balance as I'm trying to get back into work as we took the last week off and, and now getting back into trying to have some, some normalcy um, because my one-on-one client work is a tremendous priority as, as uh, I think will speak for itself. But um, that's been probably the most challenging because there's just such a large demand. I mean, you have seen many, many nights and many, many days in which I'm kind of a zombie after the day because I'm just so spent from all the the check-ins and the recordings and those different factors. And to go into those now with what I would probably say is 10 to 20% of my normal bandwidth to try and show up to the same degree um, has been very difficult. Um, But I know that it's going to get better. And I also know that everyone has been very understanding of everything that's transpired. And um, it's just a matter of of taking it one day at a time. And I think that that's the the large thing to take away from this podcast as we're going through some of these different things that we prioritize and, and those different factors that you're taking it one day at a time and continuing to evaluate and show up to whatever degree that you feel is, is correct. And, um, there's going to be days in which you probably overshoot and there's probably going to be days where you you undershoot and those different factors. But if we can get to a place where uh, that accuracy of, of just showing up to the upteenth degree or your best ability, um, that's the target. And I think that even if you go into a day thinking you can accomplish more and you don't, even having the ability to recognize partially through the day or however much you get into the day of, hey, some of these things aren't really going to fit into the day and I might need to readjust my expectations. Because that's really hard, honestly, because you have these big goals or plans for the day and sometimes it's everything has to work perfectly for it to happen or sometimes magic would need to happen for it all to happen. But it's something that it's like, okay, I made the plan, I put it together, I I'm going to accomplish this. And then you fall short of it. And it can feel really defeating when you're trying to gain some sort of momentum. And I think being able to have those moments where you stop and you kind of reflect and you ask yourself again, what is the priority right now? And it might have changed a little bit from the last time you asked yourself, or it could still be the same. And that's a good reminder to you of what needs to be the next step that you take, what needs to be the next foot you put in front of the other, because it is day by day, but sometimes it is hour by hour of just what needs to get done right now. Because when you try to zoom out sometimes, that can be all-consuming. And it can make it feel impossible. And when you just think about how can I do this exact next task, you don't psych yourself up out so much and just think about everything. You just accomplish the next task. And I think that's something I've learned a lot when it comes to um, work ethic, but also just being elite at something overall. It's not that you're doing these incredible things every single day. It's that you're doing the ordinary things every single day and building on those consistently time after time after time. And I I remind myself of that when I'm thinking about, oh my gosh, this is so much right now. This feels like so freaking much and that I'm dragging myself through mud. And then I just think, What is the next task that I need to do in front of me? And how can I continue to just do something and put one foot in front of the other to try to accomplish it? And that's just doing the thing instead of giving up. And I think that's the biggest part of it is not giving up in the instances where it feels extremely hard. And I think that people look at stress and a lot of times, especially within the media, people demonize stress. And of course, high stress isn't good. Just like if you were to have too much fiber, fiber is great for you, but too much fiber 
isn't great for you. Too much of a good thing isn't always a good thing. And so being able to recognize that stress can be really beneficial as you learn to navigate through stress, your body can handle more stress and you can handle more things and you can you can do hard things, so to say. But I think that every time I look at stress, I try to look at it not necessarily as like a challenge of this is going to make me better because I can't always have that mindset. Sometimes I'm like, this sucks, but I know I just need to take a step forward. And so it's not always the attitude of like, this is going to make me better. I'm growing through this all. It's I, I literally don't know what to do or what's going to happen, but it can't be bad to take just one step forward. And that's kind of how I have to rationalize or reset expectations or stop to talk to myself throughout the day. I think one tool that I utilize a bunch is that when I am getting anxious or feeling overwhelmed, feeling my heart rate elevate and um, not really knowing exactly what is needing to be done in the time, I will take a deep breath in and count to three seconds. I'll hold that for three seconds. I'll exhale exhale for three seconds. And then I'll go through that for maybe five or six breaths. And oftentimes that allows for me to get into a little bit more of a, a calm state. And then I'm able to think a little bit more clearly of exactly what needs to be done in that time. Um, and so getting control over your breathing and the times of being anxious or overwhelmed when there's just so many things that your mind is racing to and you can't even really put your mind or uh, put a finger on exactly what needs to be done, controlling that I think is the starting point for people to get into better alignment. You talked a little bit about planning. Um, let's talk a little bit about like scheduling and um, – like I, I scheduling and routine kind of go together, but I, I think that speaking to our schedule, I think is a, a helpful tool because when we're, when, when things are shifting and oftentimes when things are shifting, you find yourself in a situation where there are things that were not planned that pop up that need your attention. And I think that that's another overwhelming piece to a situation in which people are very overwhelmed to begin with. And so how do you navigate your scheduling in seasons of life like this? Well, I will say one thing that you've really helped me with is, and I hear it still in my head when I start to mentally do it, is I hear you say, are you clumping right now? Or is it just one thing or a few things that happened and you need to be able to separate them? And I just kind of hear that, are you clumping right now? Because I used to do that, honestly, all of the we'll time. expand on that a little bit. Clumping is just I would take one situation that happened and then I would look for and pick apart any other situation and try to tie things together to just be able to give a list of everything that was wrong. And I was coming up with so many barriers and problems instead of looking for solutions. And that's like a huge, huge mindset change that you've been able to help me with is being able to not clump it, just look at the task that's happening. And again, be able to see what does need to be the next thing that you do with it instead of being like, well, then this happened and this happened and this happened. It's this thing happened, that's separate, I'm over it. This thing happened, now what do I need to do for to get back into my routine, to get back into my schedule, uh, or to just slow down my mind a second so I don't just start pulling all of these things together and using those to guide my day because I really did used to do that all the time. Yeah, clumping is going to originate from people having unaddressed stress or frustrations and trying to pinpoint one thing that is the the problem that deserves all that energy and emotion towards it that you, that you can you can label it more so of like this is my problem it's like well not really like all these other things are really what's making you this angry and this upset and giving you all these issues that is just this thing that's happened. And like you said, it's, this is singular. These things are singular. We can't think of these all as one cumulative aspect. Um, 
it's not easy to do. I think that it's one of the things that allows for individuals to find such a higher level of peace when you're able to stop doing that within, um, I mean, it's for everything. It's, you, you do it in your personal relationships. You, you can do it within your work environment. You can do it. It's a big part of, of negative self-talk. It, it's, I think probably one of the biggest things within negative self-talk is that you make one mistake, but then your negative self-talk is spiraling down of you've done 15 things wrong that day and you, you're a piece of shit and so on and so forth. Um, so back to the, the scheduling. I will say sometimes that does happen also when you just choose to have a negative mindset and you start pushing everything together instead of, and even if something really, really sucky is happening and you're kind of in this state of denial of, I wish this wasn't happening or what if this wasn't happening to me, I always stop myself and I say, what is the reality of the situation? And this happens for big things and small things of even when my morning is running behind and I'm taking the dogs for a walk and I'm like, well, I didn't get to do this and I didn't get to do this. And it's like, whoa, 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 what's the reality of the situation? What time is it? What needs to be done now? Because you can't go back in time. You can't change any of those things. So what are you going to do about it? This is the reality. So take the next step where I felt that I was constantly living in not a reality or trying to make something that happened not real, whatever it may be, instead of just accepting this is what's happening right now. So what is going to happen from here? If you're listening to this, then that means our 12-week glute program is now available on our website, and it is discounted for a very limited amount of time for Black Friday. So you can head to the link below in the description box or the show notes to be able to access this. I am so jazzed for you guys to get into this. As you guys know, or maybe you don't know, I have been running this program and have seen incredible results, even ones that people have called fake, which makes me so proud. And yes, I'm going to keep clinging to that. But go ahead and check it out. And I'm excited to see your gains too. But going into scheduling and planning, I know, and I used to be very overwhelmed by this, that when you are going about putting together a plan and the plan changes of it feeling like the world's ending, (laughs) and that might sound dramatic, but that's really how it felt. And I used to have meltdowns. And Alex can attest to this. So I'm not just saying when I was a young child, (laughs) I really, really struggled when plans changed and anything in my schedule changed. And that kind of goes to I just thought it was unfair and I wanted it to be a certain way. And I had to accept this is what's happening now. And it's funny because people now mention of, I feel like you're much more go with the flow. And I I don't necessarily feel like it's 100%, oh, I'm so go with the flow. It's just there's not a reason to purposely resist what's happening. And so it's why not just go along with the aspect of the reality of what's happening and be able to look at it that way instead of resisting it constantly uh, because that's never fun to be swimming against the current or anything to that degree. Uh, But when you make a plan, the great thing about having a plan, even if it changes, is now you know what needs to be changed and how you can pivot from that. And that's where I kind of fell into a false reality is I never knew the real plan. I had a lot of concepts of what I was going to get done in a day or what I was going to do, how long something was going to take. And I had to get a lot better at understanding truly how long things took for me to do in my schedule and then reflecting on the priorities to see what can get done, what needs to be put pushed and who needs to be contacted for the next steps because that's something really important to me and it might sound odd to put it into this podcast just talking about how to manage your stress when it comes to, or manage your fitness journey when it comes to these things but being able to truly communicate with the people around you and especially if you are in a work environment or any kind of environment where just I mean Every environment needs communication, honestly, uh, that it is going to be so, so helpful for you to do that. And people are going to be able to help you better if you can communicate what you need or what you don't even know than being in a spot where you're not e- you're paralyzed because you don't know what to do, how to do it, or who to contact. And I think that's one of the hugest differences of kind of 
making a plan versus really putting a schedule in place and understanding what needs to happen and how it needs to happen. I have a lot of tips I can provide from a scheduling perspective. I find that this is something that I have a lot of repetitions in <laughs> in doing, but also a lot of, of failures and successes um, that go with those repetitions. And when it comes to scheduling, I think that the one of the biggest errors that many people make is that they schedule with everything back to back. Yes. As if transportation is a thing, as if having, an, <laughs> having an IV of food um, is just tapped into them and they don't need to go anywhere or feed themselves at any point, they from the moment that their eyes open up, they're dressed, they're showered, their teeth are brushed, and that takes zero seconds. That is one of the biggest errors that I see when clients send over because this is something that I work on with clients. Oh, yeah. I, I work on a lot of scheduling stuff with clients because one of my, it's not an annoyance, but it's it's something that is fixable is when clients are like, I, I don't have time for this. And I'm like, show me, <laughs> show me you don't have time for X, Y, and Z. And then they'll send over a schedule and I assure you, they have time. I've had instances where clients have not had time. And I've also had clients who have had three jobs and gotten crazy amounts of things done. And so it really is just getting down to the nuts and bolts and creating clarity relative to having the emotional response of, holy shit, I don't have any time. I'm so I'm so irritable, I'm so stressed out, I can't even fathom the idea of doing any more than I'm actively doing, when in reality, there's a large portion of your day that you're sitting and you're just anxious about all the things you have to do. And there just needs to be action that's applied. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, is that when you have, let's say you have a day that we've been kind of using as a reference point here where something comes up and it's not um, in the game plan. And so you, you, miss out on, let's say three hours of task for that particular day that you planned on getting done. You can't just take those three hours of work over to the next day of your schedule that's already packed out. Why Things not? have to adjust. You don't just all of a sudden, it's because those three hours didn't go your way that they get transported over to the next day. And now you've got 27 hours tomorrow instead of 24. But I'd like for that to happen. As much as we would like for that to happen, the reality is not that. And so you've got to be able to understand of like what was missed out. Is it even feasible to move over or is this a next week task? Just the reality of the situation you've got to have, if it's meetings, if it's, you know, talking to friends, whatever the case is, be realistic with yourself and not just continue to copy and paste over to the next day, thinking that that day is going to all of a sudden have all these different opportunities. You're going to have these different energy levels and so on and so forth. Because when you're setting a schedule the night before that day, you may have an, a very unrealistic expectation of what you can accomplish. Because you may be thinking of like, oh, I'm so excited for tomorrow. I'm going to get up. I'm going to sleep amazing. The dogs aren't going to get in my bed. Why am I making this about myself? <laughs> I'm going to have a great night of sleep. I'm going to bounce out of bed and um, get get downstairs, get coffee, and, and start my day running, basically. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that may happen. But more often than not, there needs to be these, these buffers and, and more realistic expectations in place. And one thing that that I really drive home to my clients. And one thing that I reiterate with myself is that I have a very clear understanding of my bandwidth for how much time is needed for main tasks that I'm going to have to do every single week. How much time is committed to me getting in my resistance training? How much time is committed to going to yoga, getting my runs in, doing those things? How much time is committed to the podcast? How much time is it going to take me to get through all of my check-ins throughout the week? How long is it going to take me to write all of my training programs? I have a two-hour window within two hours of what all of those tasks take me. And when they go into my schedule, those are already taken care of. Those are my priorities. And if I have any other spare time outside of those main things, then I'll, I'll find pockets to do different things. But the reality is, is that I know how the things that are important to me, I know the time that they take, and those are going to occupy my schedule first and foremost. I definitely, definitely agree because we both used to suffer from yes. uh, thinking that we just didn't have to schedule eating into a day, didn't have to put in when we would be brushing our teeth and doing those simple tasks. And a huge 
thing that helped was doing a time study where we had to fill out like 15 minute, 30 minute, 45, 60 minute intervals of everything that we were doing in a day. And it shed light on me of even just like letting the dogs out in the morning of I was just thinking, oh, I get up, I get my coffee, the dogs out really quick, like five minutes. And it's like, no, letting the dogs out, getting them back inside, getting them fed, getting them their medicine, it takes a little bit of time. And it just was not understanding the proper time. So a time study helps with that. Or I used to walk around with an actual stopwatch because on my phone, I would sometimes forget and literally time myself of how long it took me to do tasks. So I had an understanding and that's been so beneficial. And then when we linked our calendars and started using Google Calendar, because I can put a to-do list together, but that's completely different than the actual schedule and breakdown of my hour by hour. And so being able to have that calendar where I can see and put in buffer times and have everything lined up, then exactly that. I know, do I have more time for this thing? And do I have more bandwidth for this? Because maybe it fits in time-wise, but bandwidth-wise, it doesn't. Or if I also need to get changed and drive to it, then no, I can't do it. And it has provided so much clarity when it comes to putting things in my schedule and dis- making decisions. And I think that's a huge thing is how can I streamline decisions? How can I minimize the decisions that I'm making and having a very clear kind of like note card of, okay, if this is the case, then yes. If this is the case, then no, and be able to just jet through those. And I think that that kind of decision filter then to streamline decisions is immeasurable. And especially in times like this of a lot of your schedule is streamlined for the most part of you know what you're going to do, or you have things reoccurring in your calendar and to do list every single day or week that you have lined up and know that you're responsible for. Yeah, I would say that Monday through Friday, from the time that I wake up until about three o'clock is very (laughs) <laughs> consistent. Yes. There's not a whole lot of breakage in what that looks like. And it, um, I, I prefer my life to be that way. And, and as we've navigated through this change in our life at this time, that's been disrupted and it, it disrupted. Um, and that's been a challenge that I've had to, to work through because it, when, when my schedule is disrupted, that's where anxiety starts to really creep in on me. And I've got to be able to pull myself back in and do exactly what I talked about going through the breathing practices, setting myself down and saying, what is the most important thing right now? Can I create a list of the things that are most important? Um, what's on my mind? Cause sometimes in those scenarios, it's probably just best that it's not even a matter of doing what's most important. It's what's giving me the most grief in my mind Mm -hmm. because whatever is, is festering in the back of my head, the most probably just needs to be addressed right then. And as much as it may not be the most convenient situation, it's going to be such a relief off of me to just go and do that particular thing. And oftentimes it's, it's, it's silly stuff. It's like, go put away my like clean laundry or do the dishes or clean up my office or like simple stuff like that, where it's really only going to take me 30, 45 minutes, but it's been wearing on me for three days, four days or what have Mm -hmm. you. And I I think that there was, I don't know who, who this rule is from, but it was like, um, you you can't pass on something twice, basically. Like Mm -hmm. you've already said that you're going to push it off once you have no opportunity to pass on it again. You have to do it as soon as you think of it. Um, I like that rule. I don't know how much you could use it all the time. Um, But in instances in which you've been pushing things off for some time, it may be a period of life where you use that rule and to get yourself kind of back in sync. Because that's what a lot of these tools are for, like these these nifty sayings or um, things that are rules that you can implement. It's just to get into sync. It's not something that you have to do for forever, but it could be something that is a valuable tool that you continue to revisit when you get out of sync. So when you talked about just you had to do things out of your routine and some days we honestly didn't know what was going to change with it of, hey, this might happen at some point today, but you don't know when it's going to happen. And that's so difficult for me of at least if I know when it's going to happen, I can move things, but that kind of like waiting period. But how did you show up for yourself and your schedule and or routine during that time where you felt like you maybe couldn't have that in place? So- Last week was uh, 
the the most challenging because I went into Monday thinking I was going to force myself to have as much normalcy as I possibly could. Um, and as soon as I got in my office, I realized that there was nothing normal about what my week was going to entail. And so what was the question? <laughs> about how you kind of gave yourself some sort oh. of routine or showed up for yourself when you felt like all of that was kind of crumbling around you. Right. So at that point, I realized that work was not going to be my thing as it is. You know, my thing every week is I, I get through a ton of work and it's, and I, I love it. It's something that I look forward to. Um, on, I, you know, Sunday we sit around and, and watch football and then I, I get excited Sunday night because I'm like, oh my gosh, the work week's about to start. Like I'm looking forward to what's on the horizon. I'm looking forward to whatever the case may be. Um, and so when I realized that, and, and realize where my priorities were at of taking care of my mental health and taking care of my physical health and then family. So um, my mornings were mostly spent doing physical activity. I, I, it was multiple hours of me doing the physical activity and that being something that I was like, okay, I feel a lot better now that I've done that. Um, and I will, you know, to be brutally honest with you, we laid around in the morning um, much longer than what we would normally, oh, well, big time. you know, <laughs> me personally, even more so like I normally am up at five or 6 AM and I would maybe be up by six or seven, but I wasn't getting out of bed until nine, 10 noon one day. Yeah. And so that really changes my schedule quite a bit yeah. when I'm used to getting up at five or six, that's six hours that is just kind of gone, so to speak, from my day. Right. And it, when I say the physical activity, it looked a lot different because it wasn't like I was going out there and having the hardest training session of my life. I was going out there and, and maybe just stretching for 30, 45 minutes because it felt good. And I didn't feel like I had the, the juice to be able to get in a full training session. And then there was times in which I would stretch, I'd work out for a little bit and feel like I just didn't have, you know, a, a full effort to give. And then I'd go on a short run. And then I would, um, I think I had in the last two weeks, and I was telling Adam this, this morning. In the last two weeks, I've probably had you know, two real sessions and I've been out in the gym. I, you know, on my watch, I've tracked nine training sessions in that time frame, And, um, I would say that only two of them were like real sessions where I, uh, was challenging myself with load selection and those different factors. And so the, how I shifted things was just looking at that priority list and prioritizing those things. Um, and, if I was able to get into work and there were some days where I was able to do some things, uh, because we do have the, the glute program that's now live, <laughs> uh, that needed to be attended to and some things to, to, uh, address and those different factors. I also had, uh, two clients who, who were in peak week for their show that Saturday, um, which was a hurdle. And both of those clients, um, I am blessed to, to have both of them and, and being able to navigate through that with me, um, uh, with so much grace. And they both did fantastic at their show. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I just, I kind of did everything that I could in the moment and then was very much so on the back end, providing myself with grace of, mm -hmm this is not what you wanted to do for today. And I know that it's, you know, you wanted to today to look different, but that's just not in the cards right now. And that's going to have to be okay. And you can kick and scream and, and be upset and frustrated and all those things, but that's also not going to help. So you just need to take today for what it was and get some good sleep. And hopefully you feel better tomorrow to be able to approach tomorrow with more energy and more focus and so on and so forth. And if you don't have it again tomorrow, be honest with yourself and, and have this same kind of cadence to how you're approaching your day. And uh, that's how I've navigated for the last 10 days <laughs> um, with a little bit more of a uh, nudge, you know, this week where it's like, I probably, it could have been another week where I, I took off and continued to address things from my side of, of life and those different factors. But I also understand what, you know, what my, my job is. I, it's a, it's something that I've, I've signed up for. I, it's not really a job in which I can take two straight weeks off of. Um, 
And in time, you know, that may be a reality or a possibility for me, but at this stage of the, of the company of, of working so intimately with one-on-one clients, um, that amount of time away is, is not a positive to me. And so, um, navigating through that is a challenge, but it's, I I understand why it's the, the way that it is. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. I was really happy that you had used the phrase saying, complaining about it or being frustrated about it isn't going to make it better because I that that phrase just shows so much growth because in so many of the instances, it would have been fair for you to just be upset, but you were able to kind of take a step back and recognize I am allowed to be upset and it's okay that I'm upset, but again, complaining about it isn't going to change anything. So I just need to be able to look at the next day or give myself some grace, whatever that may may really look like. And I think that that's been really positive for me as well is just recognizing complaining isn't going to add to it. It's just going to take away from it. So in this instance that I am frustrated, again, how is the best way that I can show up for myself and the things that I want to get done today? And for me, that looked like last week of give, I, I knew that I wasn't going to be in the place to work and emotionally give to clients. And so I had um, reached out to my clients and let them know that we were missing check-ins um, or skipping check-ins last week. And then from there, the priority was just making sure everyone on the team was filled in because it was a, it was not expected for us. And so that's something where kind of just went offline for a few days and people needed to have touch points. And so it was getting in contact with people, reaching out to people, and then rearranging everything on the schedule where a big part of last week was me moving meetings and getting things organized to shift everything that happened. And it was just of I needed those few days to just kind of organize everything and get everything together and give my myself some grace. And just like you said, of think about what is something that can get done that's going to make me feel better. And you spent some time, you broke down boxes one morning, moved around, and there were just tasks that still needed to get done because life keeps on going and the world keeps on spinning. But they were things that maybe you would have normally been at your desk. And it was like, I'm going to get this thing done. It's going to help around the house. It's going to help my mentality. It gives me a task to do. It gives me something to focus on. And you knew yourself well enough to no, I just need something to focus on right now and to have a task that's kind of mindless but still requires me to have some sort of focus so that you could just do something for yourself and that's how you showed up for yourself but it was a double whammy because you also got things cleaned around the house so it was a win-win win I will also say uh, a quick shout out to our staff yes, um, our clients it's a, a testament to the culture that we have driven home for um, for the last year you know plus of course but the last year has been such a large focus of really having the right people in place um, having the right communication and uh, just partnership with everyone Mm -hmm. and uh, everyone to step up the way that they did last week of just willing to help in any which way they possibly could, as well as attending to the things that they needed to attend to, um, as well as our clients being so painfully understanding of of everything that's going on. Um, I've just had such a a level of gratitude that I I can't even put into words um, because of how well everyone's treated us. Um, And so I just have a lot of thank yous to, to give. It's something where this is so difficult to be happening. And if I wasn't getting support in all the different ways that I was through like you, my family, our team, um, from everyone else, like it would feel almost impossible. And it's just helped so much where I know a lot of messages have said, like, I know that nothing I say can help, but like the support does help. And it is helpful just to know that you you have that space, you have that um, time to be 
be a human and to do what you need to do. And that's something where I, because things came up last week that I wasn't aware of, I had to move meetings twice. And that is like my biggest pet peeve. I hate having to move a meeting more than once. And I was so frustrated and I just wanted to do the meeting just so I wouldn't have to move it. But I realized that I didn't have enough bandwidth and then there was plans that changed. And one great tip, I don't even remember who told me it, but is one of something that I repeat in my head all the time is as soon as you know your plans are going to change, then contact the people it affects like immediately because the more time you give someone, the better. Instead of just like, oh, I need to tell them and it's in three or four hours and then you tell them right before, that's just very disrespectful of their time if you knew multiple hours before. And so it was something where it was like, okay, I'm just going to let everyone know. I'm going to tell them the situation. And in the past, I might have been scared of like, oh, I'm moving something and this is unprofessional and I need to do this and just show up and do it. But now I was able to just be like, I'm communicating. I am vocalizing what I can and cannot do and making it very clear that if I take this meeting, they aren't going to get what they need out of this either. And I think that that was something I was very happy to just evolve in such a way when it came to communication where it felt like everything was ending of I still need to communicate with people and I need to communicate with some of my friends. I need to communicate with my loved ones. And not that that's immediately the second after something happens. I did it a a little bit later. Uh, But being able to really show up for yourself and that helped alleviate a ton of stress for me too, of just being able to say, this is the situation. This is what I'm needing, what I'm going through. And here's how you should proceed. Because even when we had meetings, I wanted to be very clear of like, this doesn't mean you can't bring things to me within the business because you're afraid to add on to my plate. And that was something I had marked down of being very specific with everyone with because they needed clarity on how to take the next steps and any way that I could provide that that would help me and help them was going to be the best. And so just being able to vocalize those things and let people know or even say, if I don't respond, this is the reason why, just so that there's no hard feelings, there's nothing that needs to be worried about like that helps my personal peace of mind so much yes i will say two other things that have been a tremendous help as we've navigated the the grieving grieving process have been journaling I've, i've just been a large proponent of journaling for a long time amongst all things i i have so many things going on in my head that it is a necessity for me to get out a pen and paper uh, or at bare minimum uh, pull out the keyboard and start typing uh, into my notes app I, I don't even know how many i've looked at this oh. Thousands, of thousands and thousands, thousands of notes of of random thoughts and, and journals and so on and so forth. And so I find that to be a, a tremendous help of just getting my thoughts out onto paper to better understand of how I'm thinking or what I'm thinking. Um, and the other thing, you know, last week was getting into therapy sessions. I think that that was uh, a, a tremendous help, something that both of us are going to continue on. Um And having that time and just having the opportunity to speak with someone is a tremendous help. Um, Your friends, your family, your spouse uh, can be a tremendous help as well. But those individuals, whether it is known or unknown, are going to have some shift in, like they're going to have some input or impact of what you're probably talking about. Um, whereas with the, the, working with a therapist, it is something where they just don't have skin in the game type situation. No, unbiased. They're unbiased. That's the word I was looking for. And so, um, having the opportunity to, to do that because we rely on each other a lot in those situations. Yes. We, we are, um, like you have been. a a catalyst to me learning so much about myself because you're the first person I've ever been able to be 100% vulnerable and 100% myself around. Like you have been the first person to just allow me to be myself, um, which is uh, something throughout this process that as people have come up to come up to your mom, I feel like that's the one thing that they said about her with your dad was that she was so keen on just letting him be him. Mm -hmm. And that was, she she let him shine through and she was always just laughing and, um, 
enjoying his his presence and you allow for that to to be me as well and you're the first person to ever do that and so but I, I can't rely on you for every emotional thing that I have going on because a lot of the things that I have emotionally going on also are weighing on you. And in, in this instance, it's very heavy on both of us. And uh, with that, the, the therapy appointments are a tremendous help. Well, thank you. And it's just because I'm so obsessed with you. Uh, <laughs> but I think that when it comes to therapy or journaling or, I mean, whatever metric that you are using, it's being able to have a way to express yourself and to talk through things, whether that's writing through them, you're talking through them, or with someone else present. And I think there's so much benefit in that because when it's all bouncing around in your head, sometimes it is hard to organize it all, understand what you're thinking, what you're saying, if you don't take time to really listen or think about it. And I always surprise myself whenever I take time to write of how my emotions come out or even just the release it gives me. Of It doesn't have to be beautiful the way that I write it or anything like that. I just sometimes need to write it down to be able to process it or to tell it to someone to be able to process it. And I I have a text and a screenshot saved from you uh, when we're talking back and forth, and it's something I really appreciate within our relationship, is that you had, you had texted me and you're like, is there anything that I can do for you today? Or is there anything I can do to help? And I had said like, no, I'm good. Well, like, thank you. I know you're going through this too. And we had kind of talked back and forth on that. And that's been something we've been saying to each other to remind each other of yes, we're 100% there to support one another. And I am so thankful for you as a support system through this and through everything over the past few years. I literally would not be able to do it without you. Uh, but with that, it's also taking a look of you can't be everything to me. And I recognized that a few months ago of just like, you are so many things to me. And it's not really fair to make it that you have to carry every single thought that's going on in my head and unpack it and go through it where you still do that sometimes. And we have incredible conversation that I'm so thankful for. And it doesn't mean that you and I still don't have great conversation. Sometimes we have conversation about what we talked about in therapy. And I think that it's just really powerful to be able to have that outlet and even just a medium, again, to express yourself and to put it out there. Because if you never take time to, again, process it, write it down, speak it to someone, like, I think that that personally, that that makes it very hard to like literally process it at all or to get through it in a positive way. And so being able to go to those things and recognize these can help me and these are tools that I can use. Again, you don't have to use all of the tools all right. the time, but I am i haven't been in therapy all the time, but I can recognize when it might be a helpful tool for me to have in place. And with journaling, I don't journal every single day a certain amount every single time, but I can recognize when the tool might need to be taken out and used. Yes, 100%. I think the only thing that I will mention before we wrap up is talking about food and kind of how I navigated that. And just going to do a very quick overview that I was dealing with having nausea and headaches and not really having an appetite. So instead of specifically trying to track my macros, I really focused on how can I make sure that I'm getting in food, period. And so part of that is that we do have meals prepped, frozen, ready to go. So that helped a ton of just being able to have a plan of something to eat and be able to grab and go. But it was the aspect of even if it was maybe not my normal type of food, if something sounded good to me and I had an appetite, just to go ahead and eat it and to really focus on hitting that overall caloric number, of course, biasing protein as much as I could, but more than anything, just making sure I was eating to recover because I didn't want to add on to, again, all of the stress of not being able to recover because I wasn't getting myself enough food um, on top of that. And I think that's a really important aspect when we're talking about fitness journey is just being able to look at these metrics and take a step and recognize what's the most important part of this right now, where sometimes it's hitting every macro, pre-planning, being precise. But sometimes the answer is 
if this sounds good right now and I'm going to get calories in, I've barely eaten today. I'm going to eat that. And I think that's really powerful to be able to understand that there can be a difference between that, even if your goals or, I mean, well, just if circumstance change and being able to be okay with that. Yeah. And I would also add that if you're in a position where the only time that you're hungry is like right before bed, you probably need to reevaluate how you're going about your day. Because if you're consuming a large bolus of your calories right before you're going to bed, then you're hindering your digestion and just making your situation worse the next day. Mm -hmm. And then it, that steam rolls. And so you just want to be cognizant of that and have more feedings throughout the day as best as you can. We're going to wrap this up because we have a whining dog that has sent me up a wall and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> The GLUT program is amazing. I have spent so much time on this and have so much confidence in the results that are going to be reaped. <laughs> He's still whining. <laughs> the results that are going to be reaped in completing this training program, the training phases, it's incredible. Make sure you go to the description box. I wish you guys could hear how bad he's whining. Oh I know God. you can't because he's these microphones so are fantastic. Pathetic. He's ridiculous. Buy the program. You're going to have amazing results. I can't wait to see what you accomplish. Get it while it's on the Black Friday sale. We love you guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave us a <laughs> Share review. Share with a friend. <laughs> see you in the above. next episode. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>